We fixin' to make this town real smoky. Ah! Welcome back to the channel everyone. In today's video, we're going to be doing another semi recap of day two. I already did a video talking about day one and everything that was revealed. Yes, they revealed things day one of EVO. Go check out that video if you haven't seen it. The second thing that I want to say starting off this video is if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing like the video and also share it with others so they are updated with what's happening inside the Tekken scene and also just the FGC overall. Jumping into this video, the first thing that I want to mention, I have to mention this, the commentators was top notch. I wanted a good variety uh, of commentators and I didn't really just wanna see Rip and Tasty Steve talk for three days straight and we got that. I didn't know who Uncle Jay was before this evo but uncle jay oh my god this guy is the funniest this is my new favorite one of my new favorites top three for sure this guy and sam ding their little tournament bracket or whatever they were commentating was incredible i was laughing so hard the whole entire time i have to start off this video and give a shout out to those two they don't need it but i'm just doing it just because they touched me in <laughs> wait what <laughs> wait what <laughs> they made this evo special for me at least now talking about sonic fox again i know i gave a little mini update in yesterday's video but just concluding what he's done so yesterday, first place in uh, Skullgirls. Today, he came in fifth place in Mortal Kombat and then third place in MVS. That's uh, Multiverses. Now, I did catch a little bit of the end of Mortal Kombat and that top eight was, well, here's the thing. You had some matches that was a Robocop mirror match and I don't know too much about Robocop in the gameplay but I seen soon as both of them locked in Robocop the whole chat started doing sleeping face and then from that moment on they were just like firing projectiles at each other and when I was watching that I was like this is why Mortal Kombat is one of the lowest entrance games at evo this is why this is just so boring to watch but then once sonic fox got knocked out the tournament things shifted so i guess there's twins there's 17 or 18 something like that but they're dominating mortal kombat those two guys uh one of them lost to a guy i think his name was rewind that match was incredible i was like this is the mortal kombat I remember it was incredible but then rewind lost to the second twin so he beat the first one and then the other twin got revenge it was incredible watching that uh that last little uh, couple of matches of the Mortal Kombat tournament the last thing that I'll say about Sonic Fox a lot of people didn't know that he played uh, Tekken or even Zafina. And funny enough, today he ran into Arson Ash and they actually had a mirror match. And it came down to the wire. I, this is why I want Sonic Fox to enter in the tournament. Just imagine this fight you're seeing in the background if this was on stage. Sonic Fox, Arson Ash, mirror match down to the wire. <sighs> Just watching this on Twitter, I was hyped. I was hyped. By far one of the biggest matches of day two was definitely Shadow versus Arslan. And I have to say, if you guys seen my live stream, I said it. If I had to say who would win, I think it's gonna be either me, Arslan Ash, he just has too many targets on him. The fact that he's almost getting beat by Cuddlecore and Shadow now. So I was expecting Shadow to perform well, but a, a six round straight 2-0, that is, that is crazy. Okay. Oh! This could be it! Is that it? No! Oh, what is he doing? Get over yourself, dude. Blocks on it, okay. No, we're punished. The reason we're Eight seconds now. left. Punish! Six seconds. Oh! Five! The oh! Back one! Six round straight, Shadow 20Z. He's Gentlemen. six Odin in his sleep. Flukistan. Six rounds straight. Six rounds straight. 
six rounds straight. That's what I'm talking gentlemen. about. That's what I'm talking about. Before it was blowouts, and you didn't even consider the, the Americans like competing. If it wasn't Anakin or Low Majin, it was no chance. But now it seems like any American, any EU player can beat anyone. No one is untouchable. That 6-0 sent shockwaves. Shockwaves around the community. There's a lot of other incredible matches. There's a lot of just incredible moments. You have cosplays, you have pictures. Um, but the big thing that I want to talk about for this video is Harada. Now, everyone was wondering, will he show up? There's a clip of Rip saying, I saw Michael Murray and Harada. You did? I saw, that's who I saw. Well, yeah, they were outside like the elevators in, in the hotel. So okay. That was, that was pretty neat. People were taking pictures with them. I was like, oh, damn. And Rip said he was taking pictures. And I'm like, okay, well, if he's taking pictures, those pictures should be making their way online. So I'm like, where are they? An hour or so later, a bunch of pictures started being posted to the internet. You guys will see some of those in the background. Also, all of these Twitters that I'm showing, all of these images, be sure to go and follow these guys if you do have uh, Twitter. So much stuff is happening and it's cool to see what everyone is experiencing. What I was just loving about Evo is the smiles. Every picture, grinning ear to ear. Everyone is so happy, win or lose. Now I think once we get to Sunday, some of those smiles might turn upside down, but right now everyone is loving it. Harada was actually at the event, like he appeared on live stream and he talked. I first found out about this from a tweet. It says, we're kicking off the day with two of the PlayStation Tournament Evo Lounge with the Evo founders, uh, Tom and Tony Cannon, followed by development segments with Warner Bros, Bandai Namco, and SNK. Now, when I seen Bandai Namco, I really didn't get too excited because Bandai Namco could mean Tekken, Soul Calibur, or Dragon Ball Z. Soul Calibur isn't at EVO, so it's just Dragon Ball Z or Tekken. Let's talk about this little PlayStation segment because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would not have seen this. And I am joined by some very special guests. We have Herbata and Michael Murray here, and Spag has stuck around with us post our- I watched it live because I was like dying to see what Herada was going to do, Herada and Michael Murray. The live stream had about 400 people watching. It never reached uh, 500. Michael Murray and Harada, they were kind of talking about, you know, the pandemic. They were kind of talking about uh, who do they think is gonna win? They never really said who, they just kept talking about Arsalan and Zafina, and then they kept talking about, uh, they were just being ambiguous. And I get it because these are the creators, they can't really show favorites towards any one person or any uh, one character. So they were asked many questions and they was like, oh, well, we like all the competitors. We like all the characters, right? That's kind of the responses that they were given. And then what I thought was interesting, Rip, was given the, or Spaghetti Rip was given the opportunity to ask two questions. Now, I knew, I just had a feeling he was not gonna ask about Tekken 8 because it just, it just didn't seem like 400 people watching, it didn't seem like he would do that. So the first question he asked, I believe it was about. Bax, I'm wondering, do you have any burning questions that you would like to ask? This is just outside of like the gameplay and stuff, but I was wondering like how, over the pandemic, like how difficult has it been to... How is Tekken evolving in Japan without arcades? And then the other one was like some other random question. Of another one more question, if I'm allowed to. According to some people that I was talk speaking to, like it, it seems like the arcades are not as filled, filled as they are anymore. Is that, I mean, maybe due to COVID or whatever, but is, that's why it's surprising to me that Japan is so much stronger than they've ever been. But I mean, wh what do you guys make of that with the fact that you're not as popular anymore? And at the end of it, right, the last portion of the, the, the interview, I'm expecting it to turn off and I'm like, okay, that's it. The lady, she asks, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna say it. I'll play the clip and I'll let you guys see it for yourself. The same way I did, you guys can see for yourself what Harada and Michael Murray came to Evo and presented. We do indeed. All right. So it's August, right, uh, Evo? And if you're mentioning <laughs> August. Wow. You guys see this okay? And uh, we've had an influx of so many new fans that maybe they don't know the backstory that well. So this is a good chance to check out the anime. You'll see fan favorites like King Huarang. Even Leroy, you know, you wouldn't think because he didn't appear in Tekken 3, but 
is in the universe there somewhere. So I called it. I I have to say, I said like a week ago, two weeks ago, they're probably going to show up and they're going to talk about tech and bloodline. But I kind of even want to say that I was wrong because I thought at least they would show a trailer. I thought they would would say how many episodes is in the series. A lot of people were wondering that. Uh, the voice actors, I thought they were go would go into some sort of detail, but they literally held up a poster. Wow, a poster. I don't know if they decided to do this themselves or if PlayStation was like, okay, you guys gotta show us something. You guys got to. That's the only way I think the, the Tekken developers would go up to Evo after two years of silence and do this. It was just, I couldn't believe it. And I'm not even upset. I'm not even upset or disappointed because I caught it. I said they weren't gonna show Tekken 8. Uh, Evo 2022 is Street Fighter. I was fully expecting that and everything that happened was just entertainment. I laughed, I smiled, I shook my head. It was just all entertainment. But I know some of you guys in the comment section who did not listen, all of the signs, you guys was like, nope, uh-uh, nope, nope, nope. They're just trolling, I still believe. Now, there still is one more day of EVO. Top eight for Street Fighter, Tekken 8, and Guilty Gear Strive. I believe there's a fourth game, I'm not sure, but those three for sure. Some point in time, I really don't know the layout because PlayStation is kind of switching everything up, but they're going to do a Street Fighter announcement, a Guilty Gear Strive character announcement, and who knows if they're going to do something Tekken. I, once again, responsibly say no. Do not get your hopes up, just enjoy the tournament. But if they did do something, that would be spectacular, but I don't think so. The tweet from Street Fighter says, Break out those spray cans. Watch top eight at Evos for SFVCE for a bop of an announcement uh, for Street Fighter 6, right? So they are planning something. Whatever the announcement is, I will cover it. I will maybe do a breakdown of the trailer, re-upload the trailer. I probably will end up doing a final recap of day number three of EVO because this has just been truly spectacular. Just watching not only EVO, but the build up to EVO, the lead up to EVO. And in EVO itself, it's gonna be spectacular. So I think I will end up doing one more video to cap it all off. So that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Like I said, go follow all of those Twitters that I shown throughout the video. Like and subscribe to this channel and this video, but that's going to be it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.